In my experience, what makes a good teacher is a teacher who can relate to students. They focus on relationship, they, they get to know the student, they try to make the student feel valued and important so that the, the student has that direct relationship with the teacher. Um, a good teacher sees past behaviour. They see a student as an individual. Uh, sometimes when a kid misbehaves, it's just the cherry on top and a really good teacher is someone who can look into that and work out what is the real issue here. Um, always valuing that relationship again. I think a good teacher is somebody who tailors their learning and teaching to the students' needs rather than um, preconceived ideas of what you want to teach. I think as teachers sometimes we get in the habit of deciding what we want to teach before we know the kids and I think a quality teacher is somebody who firstly works out what are the needs of the learners and then tailors the program and differentiates the program to meet those needs of those learners. I think a quality teacher is somebody who focuses on improving the student as a whole. Uh, I think sometimes we focus too much academically. I think we're often looking at what are the best results for a student and sometimes if we take the time to get to know the student, help them grow as an individual, help them grow in self-belief and self-confidence, um, the academics do follow. Um, improved confidence leads to an improved student, leads to improved results. I think overall a good teacher is someone who helps a student become the very best student they can be regardless of what their skills are. Not all students are the same, they're not all going to reach the same heights, but a good teacher helps a student to lift their game, help them improve and improve across the board, not just in one area but all curriculum areas, to be better than they already were. A relevant professional learning that I've undertaken recently was to look at um, lifting low achievement writing. Uh, we applied and were successful in getting the support of an RTLB um, to come in and take us as teachers through some professional development on changing our approach to teaching. This was really good for me because in the past my writing program had always been text type orientated, you know, looking at explanations, um, reports, instructions, etc. Um, this got me to stop looking at it that way and start looking at what are the students' needs. Um, one of the most important things I changed was I started looking at surface features. I started looking at what makes a good piece of writing, how to structure a sentence, what makes a good sentence, all those aspects. And what I soon found was that as the students improved in that, they were able to transfer that skill across the text types regardless. Um, one of the things we did in practicing the sentences was we allowed students to choose their context. Some chose to write a factual report, others to write a narrative. Um, it was up to them. But again, we focused on sentences and it really improved their learning. Again, um, as part of it, the RTLB observed us as teachers and gave us feedback and how we were going. Um, sometimes she took over and modelled for me and that was really, really good because I got to see um, in a different light ways of doing things. I think the coolest thing overall about that learning was I discovered a passion I didn't realise I had for working with um, boys who are struggling with learning. We have a lot of boys who find learning difficult and for whatever reason um, they hit a wall and this really um, planted that seed of um, interest and passion for me that I want to see how I can support those uh, boys grow going further in their learning. One of the key ways I work with parents to improve um, student outcomes is by creating a relationship. Now, the easiest way to do this is at the beginning of each year, we have learning conferences. Um, those learning conferences are before school starts um, and they last for 15, 20 minutes a session. For those parents who don't book a conference, I phone or I email, I get hold of, and I try and book a conference and I'm generally very successful in doing so. Um, and often these conferences that I've booked are not necessarily on the same day. They can be a week later, they can be during the lunchtime. Um, regardless, it's really important to have that conference. And the reason it's important is because it creates that relationship. It creates an opportunity to get to know that parent, get to know the students, find out about the student as to what are their interests, what are their passions, um, and get from the parents the perspective of what they think their child needs to work on. So then we can work holistically together um, to approach the child's learning. Learning should be ubiquitous, it should happen anywhere, it should happen at school, at home, anywhere they're going. And so by having that relationship with the parents to keep them up to date with things they're doing well at, things they need to improve at, is really important for that student. Um, one of the things we often do is we talk to the parents if we're concerned with a certain area. For example, maths, I'll contact the parents, say, um, share my concerns, I'll offer 
um, additional learning or I might make suggestions such as number works and together we make a plan of how to move forward um, so that the student is learning. Um, I also offer an open door policy. I suggest to parents and, and um, invite them to come and visit me after school, before school, or even during the lunchtime if that's what they, uh, you know, meets their needs, is to be able to make contact. I think it's really important that we have that relationship, we have that connection as parents, um, because the student is paramount. We have to help that student to learn. I think it's really important to use the community and outside agencies to help support a student's learning and to give them extra opportunity. Um, it goes without saying, we as teachers, uh, we don't know everything and it's really important for us to admit to that sometimes. Um, to acknowledge that if we have a gap in an area, how do we fill that gap? Um, I've, in, in my teaching career, I've used RTLBs, I've used literacy advisors, numeracy advisors, I've used sports coaches from different places. Um, I love getting out there and, and seeing who I can get in to help. I think one of the benefits of using these outside agencies and, and outside providers is they bring a whole different way of teaching and a whole different way of connecting with a student. Um, and sometimes if I'm struggling to connect with a student, one of these people do. Um, I've seen students grow and really improve thanks to these guys. Um, I've seen kids on the sports field suddenly get a click and suddenly learn how to kick a ball. I've seen kids in maths, their gaps suddenly disappearing because suddenly they get the confidence. So I think it's really important to always look at outside agencies, look at what they have to offer and look at how they can complement our program. By all means, don't overuse them. I think it's really important to be the teacher and to do the teaching but they are very, very good at um, supporting your program and helping your child learn. Look, that's a really good question. You know, we've always got to be considering who is joining the ranks next. You know, we're facing a teacher shortage and we have to look at how do we uh, encourage teachers to want to join the profession. You know, if, if you're wanting to work nine till three and have 12 weeks holiday, this isn't a job. You know, that might be what it seems, but we're forever thinking, we're forever planning, we're forever marking. It is a really busy job. You know, right now I'm on school holidays, but I'm still planning what am I going to do next year. Often I'm in the middle of a game of cricket and I'll be going, oh geez, I've got maths test to mark. Or I might be at the movies with my family and go, oh no, I forgot to contact that parent. You know, it is a really busy job. With that said, I have never been a profession more satisfying and fulfilling than teaching. I left it for a year um, early in my career and I really missed it and I had to come back. One of the greatest things I love about teaching is at the end of the year when you finish marking your reports and you've seen the kids leave for the year, to sit and reflect on each individual and think about how they've grown, not just academically, but as a person, to see how they've really developed as an individual and how you've had that impact. As a teacher, you impact hundreds of lives. Um, you know, you leave a real legacy uh, behind you. I've been teaching for nearly 20 years and I hate to think how many kids have taught and what sort of legacy I'm leaving um, really excites me. Um, but I guess it can be summed up in, in one idea. You know, recently I was in the mall and I bumped into a kid. He tapped me on the shoulder and he said, Mr. Roger, um, it's me, Justin. Now Justin and I had taught 15 years earlier and he'd seen me and he'd gone out of his way to leave the shop he was in to come and talk to me, see how I am, see how my job's going, see how my family is. And I looked at it and I went, wow. You know, what other profession do you get that? Do you get to make connection with kids that, that their memory of you lasts for so long? That one moment was enough for me to go, you know what, teaching rocks. It is the most awesome profession there is.